Okay, hello and welcome everyone. So in this video, I'm gonna solve for the consumer's optimal demands or the consumer demands for the utility maximization problem when the consumer has substitutes preferences. I'm gonna begin with perfect substitutes preferences and then I'm gonna move on to thinking about observing the actual substitutability between one good and the other in response to a price change and then I'll do a numeric example. So first off, with perfect subs utility, we're just saying, well, our utility is coming from our consumption of good X and good Y, and it's just going to be the sum of the amounts we're consuming. I am going to assume a generic budget constraint. So this is just going to be my expenditure on X plus my expenditure on Y is going to exhaust my income. Expenditure is just the price of the good times the amount you consume, right? And there's actually going to be three possible outcomes. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the indifference curves. I'm going to draw the possible budget constraints. My indifference curves all have to have a slope of negative one because my marginal rate of substitution is going to be negative one. In absolute value, it's one, right? Because my marginal rate of substitution, my slope of my indifference curve, is just going to be the ratio of the marginal utility of x to my marginal utility of y. The marginal utility of x is just the partial derivative of the utility function with respect to x, it's one. And the marginal utility of y is just the same. Marginal, it's the partial derivative of the utility function with respect to y, it's just one. Marginal rate of substitution is the ratio of those things. It's just one and one. And so anyway, but our indifference curves are gonna be downward sloping straight lines, they're gonna have a they're going to have a slope of minus one. Typically, we just suppress the negative sign. We just understand that indifference curves and budget constraints are both downward sloping. Technically, they have a negative slope. And then very often, economists just recognize that because we're ultimately comparing margin rate of substitution to the price ratio, the signs are going to cancel. So anyway, ultimately, what perfect substitutes utility boils down to is we are going to compare the slope of indifference curves to the budget constraint. So there's three different outcomes. The budget constraint could be flatter than the indifference curves. The budget constraint could be steeper than the indifference curves. Or the budget constraint could have the same slope as the indifference curves. If the budget constraint is flatter, remember, we want to consume at the highest, we, we, want, to, we want to consume the most preferred affordable bundle. So we want to find the highest indifference curve that crosses our budget constraint the highest indifference curve that crosses our budget constraint in the sense of being the furthest to the northeast, to the, to the upper right. Well, that's gonna be this indifference curve right here. This is gonna be the highest indifference curve that crosses the budget constraint. Yeah, I'd rather be on this one, or on this one, or on that one. None of them are affordable. And, I, and I, I'd rather be, I would rather be here than any point further to the, uh, further to the upper left. Right. So this is our all X or our Alex solution. Here's our all Y or our alley solution. This is a situation where the indifference curves are flatter than the budget constraint. So we have a, we have a situation where our highest possible indifference curve is going to be crossing the vertical intercept of the budget constraint, right? Yeah, I'd rather have this indifference curve, but it doesn't cross my budget constraint. And I no longer want to be down here because there's much higher indifference curves that I can be on. If I move up my budget constraint. And then the third thing that could happen is the indifference curves are coincident with the budget constraint, in which case anything, including the endpoints, would be optimal. Right, so essentially what we are going to do with substitutes preferences is you're going to recover the marginal rate of substitution, which is going to be the ratio of the slopes, or the ratio of the partial derivatives, it's going to give us the slope. And we're going to compare that to the slope of the budget constraint, which is just going to be the price ratio. That's the PX over PY. And this is always going to yield the following demands. So if the, marginal, if the ratio of the marginal rate of substitution to the price of the particular of, of the X good is greater than the ratio of the marginal, marginal utility to, wait. <laughs> If the marginal utility of X divided by the price of good X is greater than marginal utility of Y divided by the price of good Y, you will consume all X. How much can you consume? Well, your income divided by the price. And in that case, you're gonna consume zero of the Y good, right? You can consume anything on the budget constraint if the, if the marginal utility of X divided by its price is equal to the marginal utility of Y divided by its price. And so, 
Here you just consume some combination of X and Y to exhaust your budget. And then if the marginal utility of Y is greater than the price of good Y, then if the marginal utility of Y over the price of divided by the price of good Y is greater than the marginal utility of X divided by its price, then you will consume only Y. And that's this. How much can you afford? Income divided by its price. Right. So notice this statement is our bang for your buck principle. This is essentially saying, how can I most increase my utility given the price required to make that increase? So that's a comparison of the, mar of the ratio of the marginal utility to its price. This is exactly the same as, as comparing marginal rate of substitution to the price ratio. Marginal rate of substitution is just MUX divided by MUY. It's the same, uh, and then the price ratio is PX over PY. How do we get there from here? Cross multiply, right? So if we cross multiply, you'd get MUX over MUY and you'd get PX over PY. It's the same thing, same relationship. Okay, so then I say, what about this makes this perfect substitutes? Well, with substitutes, demand should respond to the other goods price. In other words, the demand for good X should be increasing in the price of good Y. The partial of the demand for X should be positive with respect to uh, changes in good Y. Yeah. I don't know, so my demand for X doesn't really depend on, good, on demand for Y. So let's see, can we at least observe this type of uh, substituting behavior here? Well, let's see this substituting behavior beginning at the all Y, at the alley solution. What happens when the price of good Y rises? Well, as the price of good Y rises, let's just say like, let's say, that, let's say we have $12 and the price of good Y is $12 a piece then we can buy 12. Now suppose the price of good Y doubles to $2 a piece. Now we can buy six. And so the maximal, the vertical intercept is gonna be shifting, is gonna be falling down towards the origin. So as the price of good Y increases, the denominator gets larger and the overall ratio gets smaller. So this intercept falls closer to the origin and in, in doing so, the budget constraint's gonna flatten. And as the budget constraint flattens, at a certain point, it's gonna become the same slope as the indifference curve. And later on, it's gonna become flatter than the indifference curve. And so you'll have steeper indifference curves, which would be the X solution, which would be the opposite of what we have here. And that's exactly the substituting behavior. As the price of good Y rises, we should eventually switch to X. So I say, well, what happens when the price of good Y rises? Well, for starters, the budget constraint's gonna rotate. It's gonna rotate because it's gonna be shifting down. So here is that rotation. So I say, well, as the price of good Y approaches some higher price of good Y, consumption of Y falls. That's just the law of demand. And as this happens, the inequality, M or S, compared to the price ratio, becomes more difficult to satisfy. Eventually, it becomes equal. And that's just corresponding. To, remember, M or S is just slope of indifference curves. Price ratio is just slope of the budget constraint. For a large enough price of good Y, we get a situation where well, the indifference curve is coincident with the budget constraint, and now the consumer is free to optimize using any just affordable, any exactly affordable combination of X and Y, because we're on the budget constraint. And if price of good Y keeps rising, we eventually get a situation where now the consumer will totally substitute away from Y and towards X. Now we have our Alex solution, our all X solution. So I say when X and Y are substitutes, the consumer's optimal bundle is determined by the relationship between relative prices and the marginal utilities, All right? So we started with a situation where the consumer was only consuming Y, oops, only consuming Y. And then as the price of good Y rose, we consumed less and less Y because we could afford less and less until the point where we actually switched to X. And that's substitute behavior. Okay, so now I wanna show a numeric example and I call this challenging. So, Consider a consumer with the following preference structure. Utility over good X and Y is gonna be two X plus two Y, or two X plus three Y. So the marginal rate of substitution, the slope of the indifference curve is two thirds, right? Because the partial of this utility function with respect to good X is two, partial with respect to Y is three, so the marginal rate of substitution is two thirds. Then I say, if the price of good X is four, what is the smallest price of good Y for which the consumer only buys X? Right, so if the price of good Y is price of good X is four, what's the smaller price of good smallest price of good Y for which the consumer only buys X? And then for part B I say, 
If the consumer has income M equal to 12, how much of each good will the consumer buy when the price of good Y is four? Okay. Well, with substitutes, we get the all X solution when the margin rate of substitution is bigger than the price ratio or when the indifference curves are steeper than the budget constraint. So I'm going to manipulate this a little bit. I'm going to just cross multiply and we get marginal utility of X divided by price of X is bigger than the marginal utility of Y divided by price of Y. I'm going to substitute in the things we have, two and three from the slope of our indifference curves from our two thirds, right? We had the price of good X. We were told that was three. Oh, price of good X is four. So we have, we were told the price of good X is four. Um, price of good X is four. Oh, great. So if the price of good X is four, then what do we want? Price of good X is four. And now I've got to fix this. Okay, so the price of good X is four. Why is this not letting me draw in the middle of the video? Oh, that's, hey, that's kind of neat. I didn't know that would do that. Sign my name in white paper and it becomes, oh. wow, cool. Only not in the middle of my video. So we want the price of good, we want the price of good X to be four. Great, so. Um, See, the thing is, I really, really do not want to have to make this whole video again. And I really, really do not want to edit this part out because I am the laziest person I've ever met. <laughs> okay, so we're just going to walk through this with this being a four instead of a three. So we have, oh, man, I'm so stupid. Right, so. <laughs> We're just going to walk through this with this being a four instead of a three because it's written right down here. So price of good Y has to be bigger than has, has we're, we're so if the price of good X is four, what's the smallest price of good Y for which the consumer buys only X consumer buys only X as long as the marginal rate of substitution is bigger than the price ratio. This happens exactly when this PY is small enough to, or is large enough to make that happen, right? Larger and larger PYs means, lar means larger and larger denominator, which means smaller and smaller fraction. This makes it easier and easier for this side to be bigger. Okay, so this is actually a four, so great. Uh, so what have, what have I done here? Well, I'm saying let's solve for PY. So let's move PY up here. That's going to preserve this equality, inequality. I'm going to multiply through by three halves. Good. Three times four is 12 divided by two is six. So this is telling us that as long as the price of good Y is bigger than six, then marginal rate of substitution is going to be bigger than the price ratio. And the difference curves are going to be steeper than the budget constraints. So we get an all X solution. And you can see that by just staring at this for, uh, staring at this for a second. Imagine this is a four. We've got four divided by six, that's two thirds, right? So if two thirds is bigger than four divided by six, bigger than two thirds, it's not, but if it is, then we consume uh, all X. And as, margin, as price of good Y gets bigger than six, then definitely this two thirds, or the right hand side is smaller than two thirds. And then we're gonna consume only good X. Um, right, so then, Part B, the consumer has income of 12. How much of each good will the consumer buy when the price of good Y is four, All right? So here we're saying, what's the smallest price of good Y for which the consumer buys only X? I found the smallest good Y such that the consumer bought only X was six. So we already know the consumer is gonna be buying Y, right? And so we're gonna say how much, if the, if the consumer has income 12, how much of each good will the will the consumer buy when the price of good Y is four? It's only buying Y. Y costs four, has 12 available. It's gonna buy three units of four. 12 divided by four because M over PY is its expenditure on good four. It's gonna buy three units of four. It's gonna buy nothing of good X. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. So we were told the price of good X is four. The price of good Y is four. We're gonna compare our 
marginal rate of substitution to our price ratio. Oh, well, if the price of good X and Y is four, this gives us a price ratio of one. So the price ratio, the, indif the budget constraint is gonna have a steeper slope than my indifference curves. That's my all Y solution, that's this right here, right? Slope of budget constraint is one, slope of indifference curve is two thirds. That's flatter, so we get our all Y solution, and here is my three, because tw I have uh, $12, price of good Y was four, so I can afford three. Um, okay, so <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and conclude here. If you made it to the end of the video, you like myself, I mean, I'm surprised that I made it to the end of this video. So, uh, so cool. We're we've joined a joined a club. So it's kind of like the old Groucho Marx joke, though, right? So like, you wouldn't want to be a member of any club that would <laughs> you wouldn't be a member of any club that would that would accept you as a member. And welcome to my life. <laughs>